shrine of lost souls. The wind whispered secrets through the skeletal pines of Mount Yuri, their needles clawing at the sky like the bony fingers of forgotten spirits. The rising sun cast long, menacing shadows across the desolate slopes, painting the landscape in a macabre palette of light and darkness. I, a seasoned anthropologist drawn to the mysteries of the unknown, stood at the foot of the mountain, the dire warnings of villagers about a cursed shrine and bloodthirsty demons that feasted on lost souls echoing in my ears. Ignoring their pleas, I began my solitary ascent, consumed by a burning desire to unveil the secrets hidden within the mountain's heart. The path, once well worn by pilgrims seeking wisdom, was now lost, overgrown by strangling vines that grasped at my boots like gnarled hands. The silence was broken only by the unsettling rustling of unseen things in the undergrowth and the occasional spine-chilling shriek of a raptor circling high above on thermal winds. The higher I climbed up the crumbling shale slopes, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. The very air seemed tainted by the mountain's history, countless slain by rockfall and avalanche, their tormented spirits absorbed into craggy outcrops. The skeletal pines grew more twisted as I ascended, warped by the thin soil and battering winds. Their bark was etched with ancient symbols and pictograms depicting acts of ritual bloodletting and sacrifice. As dusk stained the sky crimson, the suzerations crept from the woods and rocky overhangs. At first the mutterings were indistinct, easily dismissed as the wind teasing massive boulders along razor ridges. But as I traversed a narrow defile the sounds clarified into anguished human cries, frantic shrieks of pain coupled with insane cackles of mirth carried on the icy currents flowing from millennia-old glaciers. Panic constricted my chest, urged me to turn back while lingering daylight permitted safe passage down the sheer slopes. But I was in the grip of an obsession now, some external force compelling me onwards and upwards into the gathering gloom. Suddenly I emerged into a clearing ringed by towering cliffs. In the center, bathed in virulent green foxfire racing across the forest floor, stood a crumbling shrine. Grotesque stone idols flanked the entrance, features worn smooth by age and elements. Behind moldering wooden doors weird flickers of unearthly radiance pulsed in time with a sonorous chant. The scholarly caution which had saved me numerous times in dangerous fieldwork screamed at me to flee this unhallowed place. But that inexorable force drew me forward, through those doors hung crookedly from corroded iron hinges, down moss-strewn stone steps slick with luminescent lichens, into the shrine's secret heart. There amongst splintered pews and the wreckage of plundered tombs stood a coven of robed figures, their faces hidden by bestial masks carved from human skulls. The inverted pentacle etched into the stone floor burned with eldritch fire, casting twisting shadows that seemed to mock reality. Bloated frogs and venomous centipedes crawled amongst piled offerings of rancid meat and gnawed bones. As I watched transfixed, The high priest unsheathed an obsidian dagger, the razor edge glittering wetly in the gloom. Chanting escalated to fevered intensity as acolytes with filed teeth and blood-filled eyes seized a weeping girl in soiled white vestments from a rough stone altar draped with moldering scalps. The girl saw me then, eyes bruised by sleepless terror pleading soundlessly across the abyssal distance separation our experiences. In that eternal moment I stared back in frozen indecision, a crucial crossroads. In her ebony orbs I glimpsed the reflection of my own agonized soul, she was lost already having witnessed what waits in the deepest pits of being. To intervene was to embrace her fate, or worse. As the blade rose an animalistic desperation flooded my mind, momentarily usurping conscious thought. I careened recklessly from concealment, bone-handled cookery cleaving the air. Before the assembly could react I slaughtered the high priest and his acolytes in a scarlet mist frenzy. Then from the depths of the shrine rose entities that my mind refused to fully comprehend. 
As inescapable madness descended I dragged the girl through the shrieking horde to momentary safety up crumbling steps, out into the cold mountain night smelling of ozone and nails, down the treacherous path by the light of a gibbous moon. We stumbled into dawn's first light exhausted, famished, soaked in gore. I held the shivering child, stronger than her years suggested but still broken inside. In the valley below I paid a stoic elder to raise her as his ward with stern admonition never to speak of the events which had orphaned her. Later as I walked the winding road back to civilization dust-stained horrors already fading dreamlike, I recalled a carving glimpsed within the charnel shrine just before righteous fury claimed me, an amorphous, shriveled fetus with too many appendages, as though whatever blasphemous forces powered that cult long ago breached the fragile veil separating our ordered reality from places beyond imagining. I think now the cultists worshipped not demon gods imagined from twisted ritual but something far worse, an anti-life so terrible just witnessing its physical manifestation shocks feeble human psyches beyond recovery. Because in rare moments between sleeping and waking I still hear the faint unholy chorus of flutes paired with inhuman voices bubbling up from that accursed place. I know the twisted congregation, though decimated, still meets by moonlight to pay homage to outsider forces which if unleashed fully could exterminate all light and hope from this world. And I know despite shameful night terrors which leave me weeping, despite hands which still shake with a palsied life of their own, despite the daughter I should have saved yet abandoned to forces beyond her control, despite all this I will soon return to that high remote place. I will finish eradicating the sect no matter the personal cost before their dangerous rites can fully manifest blasphemies too catastrophic for human minds to retain shape afterwards. For I know now no sacrifice is too extreme if it means preventing our world falling prey to the boundless hunger of the unseen entities circling hungrily beyond imagining just outside this fragile shell of reality.